running through my mind all day Waiting for her show to play Turn your radio on She's gonna play your favorite song Okay, everyone, this is Operation Growth with Coach Brandy, and I am your host, Brandy Richard Thompson, and we are thrilled that you are here today. This is my 12th, I believe, episode of Operation Growth, the Operation Growth show with Coach Brandy, and I am enjoying doing this show, but I'm also missing the opportunity to engage with people. And so I'm doing this show in a few different ways today. And so we'll see how that works because I'm interested in connecting with you around what's most important and prudent to you as it relates to your growth. So if you are here somewhere on social media, whether it's on Instagram or on Facebook or on Vimeo or on YouTube, wherever you are, please engage. Please let me know what you're thinking about, what you care about, what's important to you so that we can create content that you will enjoy. Beyond that, I also want to thank all of the amazing panelists, participants who have participated in Operation Growth thus far. This was really a labor of love for me in wanting to share growth stories, growth opportunities, my own personal growth with you so that you are able to do the same. Our show is in countries all over the world, and we are thrilled that we are on Roku and Apple TV and Amazon Fire, and now here with you. So I hope that you will comment. I hope that you will provide some some insight and thoughts about your personal growth. I hope that you will send me growth moments. Those are short snippet videos about opportunities for you. I'm thrilled that you're here today. And so let's get right into the Operation Growth Show. So today on the Operation Growth Show, we are going to talk about giving yourself grace. It's a hugely important topic. It's something that I am struggling with myself periodically as my coach likes to share with me because a lot of times we expect the most of ourselves above all that we expect of others we really expect excellence perfection the ability to do all things ourselves without realizing that we're human without realizing that we deserve love and care and consideration and concern and so one of the things that i wanted to talk to you about today is the concept of giving yourself grace, but also why sometimes we need to give ourselves grace. And oftentimes we expect so much of ourselves. We push ourselves so hard in our work, in our relationships, in our fitness goals, in all that we believe is important to us. We push, push, push an expectation that we can meet those challenges easily. And quite frankly, sometimes we put so much on our plates that it's just unbelievable to think that you can do all of those things on your own. And then, and then once we've said, oh, I want to lose 50 pounds in a week, Oh, I want to eat healthy all of a sudden, even though I haven't been eating healthy for years. Oh, I want to get this new job or this new opportunity, even though I haven't looked at my resume or invited anyone else to look at my resume. Oh, I want to have a relationship with an amazing person and get married in six months, even though I haven't even gone out to see the landscape of people that are available. Um, so we, we expect more than maybe what is possible. We expect that we will be able to achieve every single goal that we've laid out for ourselves in sometimes an unreasonable, unreasonable amount of time with expectations that we will be perfect along the way at everything that we do. And oftentimes we don't even see it that way. We just see ourselves as creating goals 
for our personal lives, not understanding that those goals just sometimes are, are impossible to attain. And so one of the things that I've been doing for myself is cutting back on the number of things that I am expecting myself to do at any given time. And so while we all have things that we want to accomplish, we also need to think about a realistic timeline and time frame to accomplish those things. to ensure that we are being kind and nurturing and loving to ourselves. And so when we talk about giving ourselves grace, this isn't to say that, no, you're not responsible for doing these important things in your life or achieving these goals that you've laid out for yourself. What we're saying is that you're not responsible for achieving them all at once. You're not responsible for achieving all of them immediately. You're not responsible for achieving them in some superhuman way that is just unreasonable. And so the goal for us is to start to look at our lives as an opportunity to grow over time, an opportunity to achieve things over time. And as we're achieving things over time to enjoy that process the messy process, the weird process of not totally being there yet, but enjoying the journey to get to the goal that you've laid out for yourself. And so oftentimes when we look at all of the things that we need to do with our lives, there's a laundry list. There are more things to do than you have hours in a day. And so what we want to do as we look at that laundry list of things that we need to do is prioritize them around what we care about, what we believe in, what's most important to us. And so it may require you to prioritize health ahead of work or prioritize um, work ahead of business or purpose-driven ventures because one, if you don't have your health, how are you going to be able to do your work? And two, if you don't have a steady income or stream of money coming in to be able to take care of those essential needs that we all have, it's going to be really hard for you to focus on your purpose-driven area of your life. And so we're going to create some form of priorities in our lives. And those are very unique, very individual to you. And as you look at those priorities, that is going to inform how you categorize this laundry list of things that you have to do. And so if health is your highest priority, whether it's because you have a serious health challenge that needs to be addressed immediately or because it's just one of those things in your life that is extremely important to you and valuable to you. You're going to prioritize the tasks that support your health goals ahead of other tasks on your to-do list for any given day. And those health goals typically will have a start and finish they may not end completely. You may need to continue to eat healthy. You may need to continue to work out. But at some point, the initial burst of energy, the initial um, burst of doing work towards your health goals will level out into maintenance or routine that you need to incorporate into your schedule over time. So we're going to look at this prioritized health goal. We're going to create a timeline by which we want to achieve something. Recently, I started on a health goal of just being stronger and more confident in my body. Losing some weight, absolutely, but also just feeling good and healthy and able to lift weight, move around, climb stairs, move quickly and rapidly. Um, and so while there's a burst of activity around that initial health goal that'll take me a couple of months, 
after that health goal of being more confident and comfortable in my ability to move and maintain, hold weight, I'll move into a maintenance phase where I will incorporate so many workouts each week and it'll be more routine because I've built up my strength. I've built up my endurance. I've started the path to healthy living. And so after that, I'd be able to move into a burst toward my next goal, whatever that next priority is for you. And so if that is then work and finding a new opportunity at work, then that would be the next possible two month sprint to identify all of the information about the positions you've had, um, sit with someone who does resumes to help you to work through your skills and abilities um, and write them clearly and succinctly in your resume so that you can start to put in for jobs as you're looking for those jobs. It may also require you to start to research places you want to work or the types of organizations you want to work for. All of those things require time. And as you can see, just deciding that you want to do something different with work is not one task in and of itself that you can complete easily and quickly. There are all of these subtasks that go along with it. And so oftentimes we don't look at these sprints that support this big task that we want to accomplish as a series of steps or a series of tasks that need to be completed. And therefore, we are down on ourselves when we don't complete the task all at once. When we don't complete everything that's associated with getting a new job today so that the job comes very quickly, we start to be down on ourselves. We start to wonder if we're really putting out the effort required to get something done. You have input from others who are saying, oh, I thought you said you wanted this new opportunity, this new job. Why haven't you attained it yet? I thought you said you wanted to be healthier. Why haven't you worked out all day, every day until you look different? Not understanding that all of that pressure that we're putting on ourselves is actually keeping us from being successful at our goals. And so one, we're gonna look at what are our main priorities? What do we really wanna accomplish in our lives? Two, we're going to break those down into um, specific goals that we wanna attain and put time bound measures that are clear and are reasonable around how we're going to start to integrate that into our lives, most probably on the front end, creating a lot of focused activity toward that goal. And then we're going to schedule it into our lives, make it a regular part of our lives so that we can continue to move toward those, that goal while we add additional goals that we want to attain to our day-to-day -day work. And I know you're most probably saying, oh my gosh, it seems like a lot. Do I need to do all of that in order to just get healthy or um, to achieve the things that I want to achieve? And I would say, isn't that what life is about? Is deciding who you want to be, how you want to show up, what you want your body to look like, what type of relationships you want to cultivate in your life, and then go about the work of getting those things done. And it requires a level of effort that, as I even was talking about it just a minute ago, sounds like something that we would do for work. Sounds like project management. Sounds like um, something that maybe we don't always want to do when we're at home. However, your personal life, creating your personal best, creating the life that you want does require some structure, does require some not only intention, but 
the work required to support the intention to have what it is that you want. And so on the one hand, we started this conversation off about giving yourself grace, being kind to yourself, being loving to yourself as you're attempting to do the things that you want to do in your life. But then we're also talking about loving yourself enough to give yourself the time and space to achieve what you say you want in your life. And oftentimes we are challenged because we don't even really know what we want. We're not clear, we're not sure. We haven't spent the time to sit in the corner with our journal or with paper, um, just blue sky thinking about what it is that we really want to create in our lives. And then part of what happens when we don't give ourselves grace is we expect to create something, to have something, to create a life that, you know, in our mind somewhere is something that we want without taking any action steps to create it. Without putting one foot in front of the other to actually make it happen. And even in that, there's an opportunity for us to give ourselves grace over the fact that we didn't realize that we needed to do these things in order to create the life that we want. So now that you know, we're going to put a plan in place to create the types of things that we want to see in our lives. So if we want to start with physical strength and health, or if we want to start with eating right, which eating right is such a nebulous term, like what does that mean? What does eating right mean for you? What does feeling healthy in your body mean and look like to you? Those are those are different things for different people. So you got to define what each goal is that you want to achieve and be very specific about what that is. Is it eating just fruits and vegetables? Is it being on a juice cleanse for so much time during the year? Is it resetting your body ever so often with healthy foods and then eating whatever you want for the rest of the day or um, the rest of the week or month or what have you? Be clear about what this healthy lifestyle is for you hopefully supported by what your doctor says you need to be doing, hopefully supported by um, facts and, and figures about what is good for your body, possibly seeking out support to help you to craft what it best looks like for you. And then going about actually doing what you say you want to do. So many of us wake up at a specific age and we're like, okay, now I'm 30. I should have a house and a car and two kids and a picket fence and a healthy body, great job that makes six figures, whatever your 30 dream is. And at that point that you're looking at that 30 year old dream and beating yourself up, not giving yourself grace for not having achieved it is an opportunity. There's an opportunity for you to then decide what the 31 year old dream is, define it, map it out and take the appropriate steps to get there. And so as you can see, because we are limited by time, we are limited by the amount of hours that we have in a day, we're limited by our bodies at times and their need to rest and rejuvenate, our need to have joy in our lives, our need to enjoy the process as we move along, that we can't achieve every single thing that we may want to achieve in a short period of time. We definitely can't achieve it immediately, but we can plan out our lives in a way that we can achieve what we want over time. And we can start with what's most important 
to us and we can make strides in that area qu more quickly and then move along our priority lists to determine what else we hope to achieve. Now, this strategy works in your personal life. It works in your work life as you identify the position you want to do and what you're going to then do in that position, what are the priorities, not only for you, but for your leadership team, the priorities that are, that are laid out in whatever strategic guidance, plans that have been put in place. And then you prioritize what needs to be done and you move towards doing it with your top priority first. It helps to organize and, and clear up what it is that you're going to be doing each day. It helps to avoid distractions because when people come to you with things that are not a part of your clear priority list, you can easily say, I'm not interested. I'm not going to be able to help you with that because I have three priorities here at work that I need to accomplish that are tied to my performance plan, that are tied to what I'm supposed to be doing that need to be accomplished. And how wonderful would it be to be able to say that about your life, to be able to say with confidence and assurity that my first priority now in my life is my health. My second priority is my family. My third priority is making an advancement in this area of my purpose. And once I've completed those things, then I'm going to move on to the next thing on my list. You get some more things done. And that's how you can achieve those things that you want to achieve. And it's also how you can put a little bit less pressure on yourself. So let's talk a little bit more about giving yourself grace. Because we put so much pressure on ourselves to achieve things that we have not planned out, that we don't even know exactly what we want, um, that sometimes are too complicated and too big for us to be able to accomplish, we put pressure on ourselves, sometimes undue pressure on ourselves to achieve those things. And that pressure also causes you not to achieve. It causes you to be down on yourself sometimes, um, to see yourself as not being able to do anything or anything right. It was the old saying, can't get right. There's can't get right in a movie <laughs> where a guy just couldn't, couldn't make anything happen. Um, and so by creating realistic goals for yourself, you're keeping yourself from participating in your own to be successful in your life by creating the types of goals that you can not only achieve, um, but that will also bring you closer to the next priority that will come up for you. And so we sometimes glorify being busy. We glorify doing a lot of tasks just because there are a lot of tasks around that can be done. But unless you're prioritizing those tasks that are most important at any given moment and choosing for yourself and for your overall goals, the kind of life that you actually want to disregard, ignore, discard those tasks that don't support what it is that you ultimately want to do. You got to do that so that you're giving yourself a chance, like a real chance to create the life that you want. Otherwise, inherent in that decision, you're not being kind to yourself. You're not being loving to yourself. You're not being supportive of your own hopes and dreams. And within that, you're creating a cycle 
that reinforces the idea and the feeling that you can't. When we want to reinforce the idea, the feeling that you can. Because you can. It's just about making a shift. It's about removing the expectation that you will do everything immediately and putting a plan in place that allows you to create the life that you want based on your own priorities, your own needs, your knowledge and appreciation of yourself, your body, what you want to create in this world. And in that process, you give yourself grace. You give yourself the grace to be able to live the life that you want and not the life that was thrust upon you or hoisted on you or forced upon you because you never decided. It's time to decide. And within that deciding, I believe that you will grow. So I ask myself to lean in to growth. Actually, I prayed a lot about all of the challenges that were coming to me and asked God to help me to go through them, learn the lesson, so I wouldn't have to repeat it. God said, here you go. Here are a whole bunch of lessons and a whole bunch of knee scrapes that will help you to be the best iteration and version of yourself. And so I hope that my growth helps you. And that's what the Operation Growth Show is all about. So we will see you next Sunday here on the Operation Growth Show. Have a wonderful week.